All right. Uh, so we got a little interesting topic today. It, you know, we talk a lot about EVs. And again, Keith and I will tell you, we're not like anti gasoline engine or pro, we're pro automotive industry. And this is an exciting time in, in the history of the automotive industry. I think the growth of technology with, you know, the electrification of vehicles is growing exponentially right before our eyes. And uh, I think by 2025, we're going to be going, whoa. Um, Ford's making an electric crate motor. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to take did my you, Tourette's pills. Did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, carry on. Carry okay, on. so, and Keith just, you know, blurted it out there. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's got... Sometimes it happens. It, it just happens. But yeah, so Ford um, is going to be offering a, a an a electric crate motor. Um, and uh, it, it's quite interesting. Um, you, you might ask, why is that? And oh, 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 yeah. oh, please, yes, yes. Why is that, Jay? Why is that? <laughs> because that's the direction we are headed, and that you're finding a lot. It's a sector that I think Ford, not only Ford, but GM has 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 developed a similar platform as well. Um, they're trying yes. this. They're trying this stuff out in the performance world first, and have tried it out with the Mustang Mach E 1400, um, as well as the uh, Mustang. Uh, Cobra Jet 1400. Yeah. Now, now both Ford and GM famous for doing crate motors for as long as I can remember. Yeah. I mean, you you know, and 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 historically speaking, it's like, oh well, I'm going to restore a, you know, whatever, like right. a, you know, a, a, an old K5 Blazer or whatever, and I need uh, a new yeah. engine for it because engine technology has improved so much as you know, Jay. Right. It, a lot of a lot of it's in the metallurgy in the past 30 years, right? So right. so this is where this gets really interesting to me on a couple levels because what they're basically uh offering people the ability to do is go get their their beloved like vintage Mustang or you know if you're like hard up a Ford Fairmont from the 80s or you know a Falcon or a Fairlane or an LTD and convert it to an electric. They call that a, a resto mod. Right. right, right. That's right. So restored and modified. That's exactly right. Um, and believe it or not, so, I mean, a, a lot of people are trying this. Oh, from a performance we standpoint. Saw, as I punch the mic here, you know, we saw a company just before the release of the Bronco. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I think, Gateway Bronco was doing resto mods of the Bronco, where they were putting that what that Coyote. Mm -hmm. Uh, engine in it right so now you have okay so they know that kind of thing's going on they have to have looked at the data sure they um, have and they're like well here we'll 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 give you something to work with right, right. i mean it's smart so ford and, and this is according to um a reliable source uh and they're going to call it it's the the ford Illum illuminator e l u m i n a t o r i love it yeah you it. can go right over to fordperformance.com um, and it's you can get all the information on it you want. I, I did a little digging over there, but they had a really kind of a low key announcement about it that they were going to start selling this. We didn't see much of it, but what we well, do know is they're going to be at SEMA. Yeah. So here's where I think the the high key, the the big key, the large key, the large key, the the large key, the key moment. Yes. Yeah. They're going to drop the. They're going to they're going to make this a um, a spotlight event at mm -hmm. SEMA. Right. And who might be there to cover that, Jay? Oh my, oh my, oh my. You think Mr. Leno will be in town? I I don't know, but I know we will. Oh, absolutely. So if you can't if you don't have Jay Leno on speed dial, you have the next best thing, which is us. So we'll be right sure next to Jay. Look look for and, us. Yeah, and you'll get info. We're gonna we'll make it a point to be at this event, I guess. Oh, I we think will. I just we, committed us to it. No, we'll we'll be there. And we'll give you info on it when Ford makes it more info available at SEMA. Right. Now, what I, I have a little bit of information as, I'm all as ears. before SEMA. We're gonna we're gonna tease you a little bit with what we know. Um, here's some basic specifications and even some pricing for you. Okay. 
Um, the motor makes 281 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. It's an electric motor, guys. And remember, yep. electric motors are torque. It's a smallish electric motor. Right. You start stacking like the Mustang. Um, it was the Cobra Jet 1400. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it has seven. Three in the front, I think, or two in the front and five in the back, or three in the front and four in the back or something like that. And they're pancake style on the back end using yeah. one, one, one drive line, right? Um, but according to the product page, um, it's the same kind of motor that you would find in a Mustang Mach-E GT. Um, presumably, it's the rear motor, uh, as the numbers match up with the long-range um, rear-drive Mustang Mach-E. Ford also listed some other specifications because the motor weighs around 205 pounds, which is a little less than half of what a 5-liter Coyote V8 weighs. The price for the motor they released was $3,900. For one motor. Now, in comparison to that, a crate Coyote starts at nine thousand five hundred dollars, and a mm-hmm. crate Godzilla engine starts at seven thousand dollars. Here's the catch, though: you don't get much with the motor. Okay, uh, you get the motor, low and high voltage wiring harnesses, and a vent tube. You don't get a controller, charger, or battery pack. Um, we bet, though, that, that Ford will get some kind of battery pack out there and some sort of solution for that and some supporting parts together. I will guarantee you that's why they're at SEMA. Yeah. Um, they're going to rally around their aftermarket um, uh, mm-hmm. folks that that, that that work with them on any of their packages that they put out. This thing is coming. It's going to be hilarious to watch, man. Well, and I actually like that they're releasing it right now without a lot of... Um, that they're making it... Uh, very accessible to you know like you can use your own charge controller right. for the battery pack you can use your own battery packs you can use your own inter- so there's going to be requirements that this thing has for power delivery and if you meet those you can use what you want i mean they're not responsible if you goof it up but here's where i think this could bite them it, it feels like everybody and their brother over the past two years jay has gotten mm-hmm. into the ev game i mean there's companies we've seen that we've never even heard of and they're and they're making a truck. Right. And 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 you know and it, you know certainly you know a few years back nobody was really talking about Rivian. Now they're a bigger player in the market, but there are some smaller players that are that are electrifying products and it seems like there's a new one every week. Right. So Ford is basically empowering companies as startups that don't necessarily have to spend the R&D on an engine. That's right. I should say a motor. Sorry, it's electric. And again, you've heard us talk about some of the key players in the automotive industry, such as Toyota and and Lexus, kind of holding back with right. full electrification until some of the some of the dust settles because there well, is so much R and D that goes into it, and if they're working with other partners, they can perhaps save a ton of money. Um, or I'm I'm a performance car builder as a startup, but I've just got the love of doing what you know, building these things, and they're going to be high dollar. But I'm going to make a limited production of 300 of them. Right. I mean, is there any limit? Can they just go order 300 of these crate motors from Ford and go? Well, engine, you know, there's my motor problem. Right. Check. You there know, you go. Now I just got to work on the rest of the vehicle. I think that that's pretty cool because Keith, I know you. You like to figure out how to put it together you know and i think there's going to be a lot of folks out there in these shops that are going to find this very very entertaining to them on a side uh, as a side project yeah. for themselves how can i electrify my old mustang that's sitting over here right so yeah. let's say you got a 78 mustang and you don't want to drop 10 grand into it but you got but you got four sitting around you know and and if you have that and then all the additional cost of say the battery packs and those sorts of things you might get to 10 grand but then guess what you have you got a lot less moving parts in there you're not having to tear it down or or put oil into it or change the gasket because of you didn't get it sealing right or a pan had a crack in it you know this is the benefit of the electrification of vehicles is you take out a lot of that headache and you get these you know, you get these, we used to call them sleepers where some guy shows up in a minivan <laughs> right. on a drag strip. Right. And, you know, and, and there's at times it's like, you know, they won't pop the hood for you. And it's like, what's that guy got in that thing? Mm-hmm. How, right. how confident are you in what you brought? You know, and then this enters the game. Right. right. And right. you get some, some, some joker that shows up in a, 
I don't know, what's the crappiest car you can think of? And they drop some of these yeah. in, you know. I'd, I'd like to get. see I'd like to see a gremlin uh, just, yeah. just 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 right? re- re- smoking everybody, a- right? Absolutely. Yeah. So just to guys guys give you an idea and I think you should do your research on it and go out there and have fun with it because there's a lot of information on what Ford has done and racing and stuff and how much they're getting out of these. So back in 2020, the Ford Mustang Cobra Jet 1400 prototype, it went through a quarter mile in 8.27 seconds at 168 miles an hour that was just a prototype and i think that they've even gone beyond that since then it's pretty amazing um they've been out there right next to the funny cars dragging them uh and it's so funny to hear them because they they wind up yeah so yeah so tight it's that that tone that that electric motor's putting out and then on top of that all you're hearing is the the rubber of the tires just flapping it's just yeah. a, it's a strange sound, but man, oh, yeah. I was like, I want to go see that in person. I want to see that live. So I think they're going to have a it, live demo of this at SEMA this year. So again, we're going to be there, guys. Yes. So come check us out. And it, it, if you have, I've experienced this as well. And the most comical thing is we, as fans of muscle cars, race fans, people that show up to these events and they've got some sort of an electric version uh, of a vehicle there, right? The fans will make the they, they start making engine noises for you. It's right. like they just feel the need. It's it it just feels odd, and so you get people just literally going, Rah! you know, because right. the car's not making any noise. Right, it's great. Right on, man. So hey, guys, Keith, you can can you tell Keith and I are excited about this? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, GM has one as well. Uh, it won't be long before this becomes more common than you'll ever ever would have ever imagined. So uh, let's just keep on, you know, burning through those uh, semiconductors, and and we'll, you know, hopefully, hopefully somebody will come along and 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 enhance those or develop a process that will even improve on those, so that we're not having these shortages or eliminate those at some point. There may be some technology that might help that. So we'll see what happens. But we are living in some very exciting times in the automotive industry, and again, we will be at SEMA. So make sure that you um, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're over at youtube.com forward slash parts counter gurus. Hit the subscribe, ring the bell to get notified when the videos come out. Uh, most importantly, you'll get notified from probably some of the stuff from SEMA that we're going to be putting out during that time in November. So make sure that you've got, you've done your due diligence by getting into our, uh, into our video room and making sure you have access to those videos. Otherwise you can also go to parts counter gurus.com. Um, and we have a, links to our podcast upper left hand side it's uh, podcast links we're on every major platform out there so just make sure you subscribe to those as well because we will be hopefully uh having some live podcasting going on didn't we say we already had uh, potentially aera is going to be involved with us right we have yes among others yes that's uh just let's just say there's some overlanding um oh yeah some camping enthusiast uh, type they, stuff they would you be wanna... big name overland type yeah it yeah. wouldn't that we've it already be, you know joe's joe's camp kitchen cookware right it's uh right it's uh it's it's probably brands that you own one of already um yeah or you're thinking about it right so, yeah. so we're going to be bringing that to the forefront and hopefully showcasing some new product they might have to offer so just please make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel as well as our podcast over at parts com. <sighs> what else man That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.